Yeah, we just take the base and raise it to the number of digits that we have. Uh, so uh, 32 bits would give us, uh, uh, excuse me, let me go back, would give us two. Someone find my Y to X. You'll see it. You gotta see my wife there. Oh, here it is. Uh, so I take two and raise it to the 30 second power, and that's how many IPs we get at. Which we say, good gracious, we would never run out of that. Uh, but that's before we assign washing machines IP addresses, refrigerators got IP addresses, right on the thing. Bluetooth uses IP addresses. Your cell phone probably uses it. It's got Bluetooth and it's got, uh, if it's got Wi-Fi on it, then that's two IP addresses right there just for cell phone. So what happened is the IPv4 started really, really having problems. It's still out there. Uh, but they came out with an IPv6, which is 148 bits. Anybody remember? It's huge. Uh, so this is the IPv6 address right here. It's given in hexadecimal. FE80 colon, then they leave out some digits. But that's the, that's the IPv6. IPv6 is used, uh, predominantly for, uh, the internet. It still uses IPv4 because there's a lot of c companies that reserve those IPv4 IPs. But just about anybody that's asking for, for new internet, an internet IP would get an IPv6. Does that make sense? Uh, because we'll show y'all uh, what we have to go through to set up the, uh, this guy. So this has the 485 on the side, but what they've also added is they've also added the ethernet IP. It uses, it doesn't use the TCP IP protocol, it's called a CPI, a uh, control process for industry, which basically came up and uh, decided what packets we needed to put together to send out control information. So that means when we hook up to our, uh, up to our PLC, but it'll still transport over a, over a, uh, any Ethernet network. It's just that it's set up to basically handle control information. So the first thing I need to do uh, in using RS Logics is to establish communication with my PLC. And so what uh, what they use is they use something called RS Links, and it's inside the Rockwell. And here's uh, RS Links. <clears throat> oh, I, I think I had it right in the background. No. And then you come up and you, uh, you configure your driver. Y'all understand what's a driver? I see it all then. Yeah, well, what we have to understand is there's no piece of equipment that is controlled by a computer that's not controlled by software. A, a piece of software that is specifically designed to run a specific piece of hardware is called a driver. And so your operating system is thousands of drivers. So that's what an application does. An application does not have drivers. An application applies the operating system drivers that runs your computer. Right? Understand? And then, of course, we have something called a shell, which is the guy that allows me to control my operating system. So Windows Explorer, that's a shell. So we'll have to configure the drivers. So this is all the drivers that would be available for, for uh, Allen Bradley PLC. Uh, we're using RS-232 GFI. So I installed that. So I added it. And then the next thing I need to do is configure this driver. So it's using uh, the old COM port, which is what basically Bluetooth uses. So our old COM ports are still out there. Uh, well, the first thing I had to do is I had to figure out which COM port it was assigned. Anybody know how I did that? It's a little harder to find if you're running Windows 10. You'll have to just type in Control Panel. 
on the control panel, and then what you need to go is to go to uh, small icons. <coughs> and then what we do is we can, oh, I saw this one. Uh, what we, we do is we go, we can get to it through there, but uh, it's a little harder. My computer, then I'll go to properties. And then I'm going to go to Device Manager. So if you're running Windows 10, you just type in Device Manager and it'll, it'll be a desktop out icon. So uh, what I did is I came down here. So here's the, the COM ports. And then I plugged, and these are the ones that was already there. <laughs> so I plugged my, I plugged my, I plugged my, uh, my dongle in. And then when it went out there and find it and installed the driver, it showed me COM3. Does that make sense? Uh, by the way, you can change that over there. So that's called device manager. So I know it's on COM3, and then I can come back and I can auto configure it, and it'll come up and set the speed. So that 19.2 or 19,200, that's the number of bits you transfer in per second. And the rest of the uh, top bits and all that you don't know because we're doing, we're doing what we call auto configuration. Does that make sense? Okay. Very okay. So we've connected to the PS. Now, once we've connected to the PLC, uh, we can uh, we can load up RS Logics uh, 500, which is what we're using. And I think it's all down here. Uh, we got a link down here. That's the little guy that's got the ladder on it. And this is RS Logic 500. And it's very similar to the 5000 that's out right now. So if you learn this one, then you'll adapt to the 5000 uh, real easy. Uh, then I'll go to comms. I'll see who's active and it'll go out there and say there's my PLC. So it's an SLC 504. Uh, it's out there and it's active and it's ready for me to connect it. Okay. And it's going to tell me I got an error because uh, what happens is that uh, we don't buy batteries for these things. So everything gets lost. So what we would do now what we need to do now is once we've got the communication set up and it should be the communication should be set up on all your PLCs there. I just went through the, the actual technique is we come under here under files and we say what we say new. And the first thing it's going to ask if this is every PLC I've ever played around with because RS Logic 500 can, is able to control or to program a lot of Allen Bradley PLCs, right? You understand? Some of them's got different, uh, some of them's got different features. Some of them's got different things. Some of them's got different CPUs. So we got to be able to compile the program over to the right one. So the first thing you're going to have to do on these guys is figure out what, what CPU you have. Okay. Now this information, I wrote it down, but on your modular PLC, what they usually do is they put it on the door to the CPU. It's down at the bottom. So I came up here and mine is a whoops. Uh, mine's a 147, which you see all those, but we're looking for an L four fifty uh L five forty one. And I didn't get to see. But that's all we got. Okay. I So it's either this one or this one. We'll try both of them. Okay. Now the next thing that we have to do is once we load in or select the CPU, everybody okay? Is that we have to configure the I/O for the for the for the rack, or if I get a hybrid PLC. If it's got another, if it's got an I/O module over here, then I have to configure that. Uh, so we'll do that next. So it says, first of all, this this is one of the problems they they uh, we had last time. The first thing we need to do is figure out how many slots we have. So we start with the CPU. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slots. Okay. 
is that nothing's in these slots inside of that. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Okay. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna select a seven slot rack. There you go. Oops, I'm gonna select a seven slot rack. Okay. And now it automatically puts the CPU into slot zero. Everybody okay? So it goes in the, the CPU goes in the first slot, but the slot is addressed as zero, right? Uh, so it's there. So we got slot one. I'm gonna come up here and look at slot one. So slot one has got a uh, input port on it. It's a 16-bit input, even though we only got eight switches up here. It's a syncing input. But these all these switches have to be sourcing, right? That makes sense. And I wrote the number down. Uh, we open up the door. We look at the number. So we're looking for a, a 1746. IB16. IB16 right there. Uh, by the way, this is all IO, so you can come back and just, since we're doing inputs, instead of having all your IOs in there at all at one time, it makes the list a little smaller. So IB16, this is us, we got it there. And then my O, which is a sourcing I O for uh, it's a same same thing, but it's an OB sixteen. So I'm gonna come over and switch over to uh, outputs. And I'm looking for an OB sixteen. There it is right there. Okay. And then we're through. So we've got our PLC configured. Everybody okay? That makes sense. Uh, now on our logics. This is our palette of instructions right here. Uh, up the top is the most commonly used instructions, and then the other ones are down. Uh, the furthest we'll get into this semester, we'll be using bid instructions and timer and calendars this semester. We're okay? okay. So uh, what we have to do, by the way, you don't do this. This is done automatically. But the last instruction in RS Logic 500 is what instruction? That's the last one. And it's put there automatically. Uh, all we do is put runs above this. Right, so I'm going to come up here. And then I'm going to, this is the run. That starts a new run. Y'all see where I'm at? Yes or no? And I'm going to drag it down. It turns green. And here's the run. And right off the bat, we get an error line. Huh? It doesn't, have doesn't have outputs and don't have inputs. <laughs> so we would come in here and we would uh, put in an input. Are we okay? And then we'll do another one. We're going to use a standard a ceiling circuit or memory circuit. And then what do we need to do now? We got to send the logical addresses out there somewhere. Uh, so what we have to know is that this is slot one, right? So my, we'll, we'll actually we won't use bit instruction. We'll actually use one of these there. This is slot one. Why is it slot one? Okay, slot zero. So one. It's, it only has one word, so I don't have two words, which would be 32 bits, so we don't have to identify a word address, right? You understand that? So we, we would start off going what? We'll go in N, right? I. Comes next. Colon. Good. One slash zero. Okay. So what we've done, now this, is, this gets people confused. Oh, ours, because our switcher, switches are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They got numbers above them. Right? But the actual switch 1 would be addressed as 0, right? You understand that? Okay, now when I enter this, what it's going to do is it's going to ask me for a symbol name. So we want y'all to get in the book normally gives y'all the symbols. 
I'd say stop. So this is going to be our stop switch. Are we okay? And then we'll come up and assign this one. Uh, this will be input colon one slash one, right? Okay, we're going to enter that and we'll call this star. Uh, then we'll go ahead and assign this one. This is going to be output colon two slash zero. We're okay. That's in slot two. And then we'll call this, we'll just call this run. And then once I assign it a symbol, I can come over here and just type in run. And it'll go ahead and set that up for me, right? And that's what the beautiful beauty of symbols. Your newer PLC basically requires you to assign symbol names. They don't call them symbols anymore, by the way. They call them tags. So this is, that makes sense? Okay. Yeah, but that's what the uh, newer PLCs don't call them symbol names. They call them tag names. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to check the syntax. That's the little computer up here with a little smash mark about it. And it came up and everything checks out okay. It don't mean the program's correct. It just means it's in the right syntax, right? You understand? That makes sense? Numbers on the these are the actual module numbers. Uh, for some reason, Alex, so if I, so, so my input modules are 1746-IB16s. So that's the model of the output module. And for some reason they put that up there, which I don't know why. It's a good question. But notice I entered the address and it put the, it put the input, it put the, it put the colon, it put the module number right here. And then, it, then when you enter it, the bit address drops down below the thing. It doesn't do that on SEMA. Everything stays basically the way you put it. Are you okay? So what's the next thing we need to do? We're going to come up here. We're going to download it to the PLC. This is where you give your, this is where you give your program a name, right? Okay. Now we're going to have y'all, uh, and it's going to come up here and tell me I have an error. I've accessed it. Right? So we'll come up here and uh, put it on my desktop. Tells me my CPU don't have a name. We can actually give our CPU a name. And that wasn't the right, that wasn't the right processor, but it's going to switch it over. So it must have been the other one. Big race is different. There must have been a. Okay, so we got it in our PLC. Uh, we have this in remote. Uh, like I said, this one, uh, this PLC. Gives us the ability to put it in program mode. Program mode means you, you're capable of uploading, or, uh, uh, downloading to the PLC or uploading from to your computer. Uh, only in the program mode. Okay. The program on here, your computer or your application has to be in the offline mode to write your program, right? In the time. Your PLC has to be in the program mode. To download or upload. Okay, okay. If you have it in our remote, then you can do everything from your computer. Right? Now, if you don't, uh, what I would have just got, I would have got an error saying that it was in there. So we can switch this to the run mode. Oops, wrong thing, Rich, right here. We can go online. Right? And then, then we can go to what? Uh, then we go to run. Okay. So uh, once we go, once we go to online with Alan Bradley, he actually shows us where our signals are. Right? Okay. Okay. 
this. So I use, I'm using what we call that instruction right there. That's that's what I call it. What's the name of the instruction? Start the examiner. Oh, now this is an examine the closed instruction. That's the test instruction. Okay? No, we don't have an exact in the exam the closed one. So six one, just voluntary to find I do I do real fast, right? And uh, then it comes up and the output LED is turned on. The output to the LED. Uh, which is connected on this guy, it's connected to this slide, I guess. So, the first thing you do if you got a new PLC is what do you do? You have to establish communication with the PLC, right? You mm -hmm. understand that with the right application. Once you've established communication, then you load in the application that allows you to, to write your programs, right? You understand that. Uh, then you go to new program and what's the first thing it wants you to do? Configure the CPU and then the, the I.O. Right, so uh, if you have a fixed PLC, you don't have to do the second one because it knows what you got, right? If you've got one of these hybrid PLCs uh, like this, if you don't have an I.O. module snapped to the side, then you don't have to do anything besides just, just selecting the CPU. Uh, but if you do have an I.O. module on your side, then you'll have to go into this I.O. and configure that module or tell it what type, which one of these modules you have. Because you can get all types of modules for this PLC. Are they okay? All that makes sense? <coughs> so, ladder two. Everybody okay with ladder two? So, what's ladder two? Uh huh? That's your main program. Uh, when I fired up the 1100, uh, the 1000 last time, uh, it gave me a bunch of ladders. So a lot of your fixed PLCs, your, the number of ladder programs you have is fixed, right? Understand that. Uh, this guy right here, I can, I can add more. And I think you just right click on program and it's offline and you can tell it to add more ladders. Uh, uh, this shows us, these are our data files, this is for what, output, this is for input, data, and we can look at that, there's a lot of stuff going on. This is a, uh, this is a free running clock that we can use. Uh, but like I said on your math operations, so this would be the flag, right, and status register, or your sign bit, your zero bit, your overflow, your carry, uh, overflow, tap, math overflow, select. So those would be, uh, these would actually be the flag. So these are the status registers. These are basically inside the, uh, inside the CPU. Are we okay? Uh, these are our bit files. And what can we use bit files for? Huh? What we call internal coils, right? So internal coils are coils that don't have to generate an output. Everybody okay? And we got a ton of those. Uh, this is where we'll get into our timers. We'll talk about all this information that's in there. How to set a timer number, how to set a base, how to set a preset time, and then counters. Are we okay? And then we'll play around with, if you take the second semester of PLCs, we'll play around with the actual uh, control register that's used for your more advanced commands. Uh, here's our integer files. Uh, now we're not using them. And what's an integer? Yeah, whole number, number without fraction, right? And then we have floating point numbers, also called real numbers. So Siemens calls them real numbers. Uh, 
Now, the decimal point has the ability to move, but also it has the ability to use engineering notation. And what's engineering notation? Yeah, it uses power times 10 to some power, right? Uh, what it does is it starts rounding, but it, what it, what it makes your numbers less accurate, but it allows you to handle extremely big numbers. So uh, we won't be getting into that because you can't have any, you can't have floating part numbers with timers, you can't have floating part numbers with counters. Uh, we'll get into this and take the second semester. We'll talk a little bit about the FAS so it has the ability to represent exponents or uh, times 10 to some power. So what do we call this circuit? This is called a start stop. It's also some people call it a free wire control. Some people call it a mini circuit and a filling circuit. So they're all all the same. Any questions? So what we're going to try to do tonight, and we're going to, it's going to be fun. I'm still in the process of setting up computers because my uh, supposedly I had I had time during the day because I'm not doing a day class and I would come in and wanted to come over here and work with the with the PLC but they've had to do something every day so let me pause this and uh,